Nice! What will you design today? Well, in this tutorial we are going to create a bookmark. I will guide you step by step through the process of creating it yourself. You will need Canva for this. I'm using the pro version this time, but you can also create this template in the free version. The difference will be that you may be not able to select some illustrations because they have a crown icon. You can search for bookmark templates in Canva search bar and choose one that suits you. As you can see, there are many different templates available. Without a crown icon means it's free for everyone. And with crown icon means only pro users can use this template. Well, we are going to start off by clicking on create a new design in the top right corner and adjust the settings. I will change pixels to inches and enter 2 and 6 for width and height. And as you can see, Canva automatically provides bookmark dimensions, but you can also change this yourself. So as you can see, the settings send you to the design area of Canva and you can begin by selecting a color for your bookmark. There's a wide range of colors available and you can use even a pipette tool to select specific shades. Alternatively, you can mix colors together and remember you can always modify the color later if you're not satisfied. However, for now, I will stick with the color white. I didn't mention what I'm going to design on the bookmark, so I'll explain it a bit. I'm going to create a coloring bookmark or a tracker, or you can simply see it as a coloring page. I think this will be a super fun do-it-yourself project for everyone, so let the fun start begin. Click on elements in the left sidebar and select shirts. I'm looking to create a bookshelf, so I search for bookshelf outlines and then click on graphics. As you can see, it displays many images, mostly consisting of black doodle lines. Even if you are using the free version of Canva, you can still access these images from the pro version, but I recommend subscribing to the pro version, otherwise you have to pay for each individual graphic image and over the year, if you plan to use Canva frequently, it will be more cost effective to have a subscription. I was specifically looking for a doodle image with no strict lines, I like that more, and maybe many people will now say you can also doodle this yourself, but I can't. I'm a perfectionist and if I make a mistake on my first try and I can't fix it, I have to start over. And this is easy because you can start over, over and over again. So as you can see, I clicked on an image and enlarged it. I'm going to copy it and I'm using these shortcuts on my keyboard. For Mac is it Option and for Windows is it Alt. Press the button in on your keyboard and also click on the graphic image and then drag the image to the desired position. I've made the image transparent so that I can trace the bookshelf. I just want a shelf because I want all the doodle images to look like they belong together. So if I find separate book graphic images, I can put them on the shelf. You can do this too by selecting draw in the left sidebar and then you can choose from different pencils and you can easily draw anyways. I select the first one and then I change the thickness to one and set it to black for tracing and then you can trace it. I will spare you the time I've spent on this. Now I'm going to look for another fun outline image. Initially I was searching for lamps, but then I had a better ID, disco balls. So I clicked on elements again and searched for disco outlines in the search bar. You can also make it even more specific by just typing disco ball outlines. I think that will bring up even more options. Did you know you can also change the image to a fun color? You do this by selecting the image and giving it a different color. I selected it to be pink, but then I changed it back to black. Alright, I've made quite a bit of progress in my bookmark design process and now I'd like to share some tips with you on how to search and save images that you might want to use in another project later on. I don't know about you, but my shelves at home are always filled with plants, vases and small treasures. I was looking for a cute little state of or sculpture and I found a nicely drawn version of the State of Liberty from New York, so I'm going to use that in my bookmark design. Now I'd like to show you how easy it is to save these images if you might want to use them in another project later on. Here's the name of the image and at the bottom you will see add to folder. You click on it and you will see all my folders. I select the first folder and that's where I save the image. You might be wondering where you can find the image later on. It's in the folder where you saved it. My folder is called graphics and it's already in my favorites in the left sidebar. But it only appears here if you use these folders often, so you might not see it in yours. How you can find it? Well, it's super easy. Just click on projects and then you will see all of your folders. From there you can select the folder where you saved your image and then you can use it. As you can see, we're not quite done yet and I'd like to share a few more tips with you. In this bookmark there are many designs from the same creator and you can easily find them by doing this. 
I go back to my folder, let me show you how to get there easily. Here I saved many different outline images. I select one image from the same creator, and when you click on the three dots on the image, you will see the name. This way you can easily find the image in the search. But if you want to see more images from this creator, you click on view more by the maker. However, there's another option that I use a lot. For this you need to go back to elements and then go to recently used outline images. I select another one and then there's an option that says see more like this. Canva will then search for similar images in this style. Sometimes they are from the same creator and sometimes they are from different creators, but in a similar style. I find this tool super helpful and easy to use. For the next tip, you need to select an image again and we will make this image larger and rotate it. And you can easily do this by clicking on flip and then flip horizontally. This is sometimes very useful if you want to use the same image twice, but maybe mirrored to create a different style. I'm almost done with the final design and I've added a nice quote, which should be seen as a small poster hanging on the wall. And now I'm going to create a fun backside. I select the plus icon and a new drawing area appears, opening in the same area as the other bookmark. On the backside, I write 2024 and draw a line. I do this by selecting draw on the left side of the sidebar and then choosing a pencil and simply drawing a line. Of course, you can also select a straight line from the shapes. Just choose what you think look nice. And finally, I added a hanging plan to the bookmark and choose to write the word month. You can of course omit this or change it to year, but some people read a lot of books and may want to track this by creating different bookmarks each month. This is the final design and now I'm going to show you how to save paper when printing this bookmark at home. To do this you need to save the project as a PNG file. Canva automatically creates a zip file for it. A zip file has the file extension zip and is represented by a folder icon with a zipper. How do you open such a zip file on your computer? Well, it's super easy. Usually a zip file is saved in downloads folder and you can open it by double clicking on it. As you can see, both PNG files are in the folder and then you go back to Canva and open a your documents and go to uploads and upload the png files back to canva click on both files and the images will be automatically added to your document then click on borders in the top left corner and create the border around the image you can make this border as thick as you want i choose a thin black border and when you print the document later you can easily cut along this line or trim it i do the same for the back and then you can save it again, but this is a master PDF print file, and it's important to save it as a CMYK file. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I do my best to assist you if you face any issues. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and don't forget to give it a like, and consider subscribing.